except the Dongfeng family of short, intermediate range and intercontinental ballistic missiles operated by the Chinese PLA Rocket Force, formerly the Second Artillery Corps, of which is known DF strategic missiles are prohibited for export. All other types of missiles are sold to China's friendly nations. As China is a member of MTCR, its export versions of missiles are subject to MTCR requirements that missiles range is limited to 300 kilometers. In this China's 13th air show, a large number of new missiles are displayed, of which some of them represent China's latest missile technologies. Next to me is the Star Product HQ-9BE, which is exhibited here for the first time. It is a long-range air defense missile weapon system. The farthest interception distance can reach up to 260 kilometers. Mainly used for homeland air defense, it can also be used for battlefield air defense. It can be integrated with some medium and short-range weapon systems to form a multi-level air defense system, achieving a systematic air defense operations. Next to me is the launch vehicle of HQ-9BE missiles. There are generally four such vehicles in a combat unit. In other words, 16 missiles can be launched at the same time, and two missiles can be used to intercept one target. It is the first time for HQ-9BE to participate in the Zhuhai Air Show in the form of actual installation. There are four missiles equipped in each vehicle. One battle unit can have multiple such launch vehicles. Therefore, a large scale of multi-vehicle combat can be formed. Its ability to intercept multiple targets is very strong. The main purpose is to intercept various airstrikes at different flight altitudes, including conventional combat aircraft, stealth aircraft, armed helicopters, cruise missiles, and air-to-surface missiles. The range of the HQ-9BE has been doubled, from 125 kilometers to 260 kilometers. Slightly exceeds the range of the 48N6E3 missile used by Russia's S-400 air defense weapon system. The doubling of its range is of a great significance, but it is not so fearsome. The most fearsome is not the range, but its anti-jamming ability. This surface-to-air missile uses an active seeker, and its anti-jamming capability and anti-saturation strike capability far exceed the Russian S-400. Obviously, China has made rapid progress in recent years in its ground-based air defense missile weapon system. In some areas, it has surpassed the United States, and some technical aspects are also superior to Russia. Of course, we still have gaps but we have to acknowledge our progress. For example, the warhead of the S-400 air defense missile still uses fragmentation to kill the target. Using the fragmentation warhead may be effective against aircraft, helicopters, and cruise missiles. But as an anti-missile weapon system, its capabilities are probably relatively poor. If you cannot directly hit the warhead of the incoming enemy missile, it is likely that the interception will fail. So far, only two countries, China and the United States that have such missile defense systems to direct kinetic energy to hit the warhead of incoming missile. Our HQ-9B has a strike range and altitude that exceed that of the U.S. latest Patriot 3 air defense missile system. We had made a huge progress in development of our ground-based air defense missile weapon system recently, not to mention that the HQ-9BE air defense missile displayed here is an export version. Our domestic version could perform better. For example, its multi-target interception capability could be more advanced in attacking different types of aerial targets at the same time.
In addition to the HQ-9BE, the HQ-17AE is an advanced short-range air defense missile vehicle. It launches missiles vertically and is highly integrated. It has independent combat capabilities for target search, tracking and missile launching while moving. It can launch four missiles to intercept four different targets at the same time, a single vehicle equipped with eight missiles. This weapon system is very distinctive. On the back there is a search radar that can search for air target. In the front, there is a tracking and guiding radar so it can accurately track and lock air targets to guide the missile hitting the target. Both are rotating in 360 degrees to cover a full field of view. In the same way, the FK-2000 air defense missile weapon system was also exhibited for the first time here. This vehicle integrates missiles, anti-aircraft artillery, radar and photoelectric equipment. As a short-range defense system, it can effectively intercept air-to-surface missiles, precision-guided bombs, fixed-wing aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles within a range of 25 kilometers. The vehicle has the ability to fight while moving. It can search for and find targets at speeds greater than 20 kilometers per hour and launch missiles or use artillery to effectively intercept targets. Therefore, this system can be used for defense bases and important sites, and also used to accompany field troops in air defense. It is an integrated battle vehicle. Just like the HQ-17AE, it also integrates two radars, plus an optoelectric device, six missiles on each side, and two anti-aircraft guns. It is a six-barrel 30mm anti-aircraft gun and can fire thousands of rounds per minute, so I also call it a super chariot or battle vehicle. As an all-weather short-range terminal air defense system, the FK-2000 system integrates multiple killing methods. It can autonomously search and find targets while on the move, launch missiles or artillery shells, and perform accompanying field air defense missions. A single vehicle can effectively destroy multiple targets such as cruise missiles, helicopters, fixed-wing planes, quad-rotor or multi-rotor UAVs with a defense radius of 25 kilometers and can also effectively strike ground targets. This is the LY-80. Its main combat mission is midfield air defense, as well as important site-based defense and area air defense. It can be used in two combat modes of regional air defense and mobile air defense, mainly intercepting combat aircraft, air-to-surface missiles, and cruise missiles. A launch vehicle can carry six of LY-80 missiles. FK-3 is a medium and long-range air defense missile system with a range of 100 kilometers. The shore-guided universal launch vehicle is the first to display at this air show. Almost all anti-ship missiles and cruise missiles can be launched by this new launch vehicle. Anti-ship missiles refer to missiles launched from ships or from shore or aircraft to attack surface ships. Semi-armor-piercing blasting warheads are often used, and solid rocket motors are used as power devices, with autonomous guidance and self-control flying. In the Coastal Defense Weapon Display Area, the Integrated Coastal Defense Weapon System and Overall Solution were unveiled for the first time. In addition, supersonic missiles, anti-ship missiles, long-range submarine-to-surface missiles and other products are collectively unveiled as a new generation of coastal defense weapons. This is the YJ-18E Coastal Defense Missile exhibited for the first time. It cruises at subsonic speeds during most journeys of its flight, and penetrates at supersonic speeds to the end. It has high speed with excellent stealth features and precision attack. YJ-18 can fly very low, cruising very close to the sea surface. Due to the curvature of the Earth, it cannot be detected by ship radar at a long distance. Therefore, before the radar found it, it achieved economic cruise at 0.8 times the speed of sound. It does not use full supersonic flight, so its range can reach 600 kilometers. It would be locked and intercepted by the enemy's radar at the end of the attack if flies with such subsonic speed. Therefore, the YJ-18 will automatically discard the subsonic cruise module in the final penetration stage and use a turbojet engine and a small rocket to boost it. Perform terminal penetration attacks with a high maneuverability of Mach 3. Mach 3 is equal to a flying speed of 1,020 meters per second. This means that the final penetration of the last 30 to 60 kilometers requires only 20 
29 seconds to 1 minute of flight time. Therefore, in the penetration phase, even if it is locked by the enemy's detection radar, it will perform terminal penetration at 3 times the speed of sound and in a snake-shaped movement to change its trajectory. Even if the enemy can launch the interceptor missiles quickly, it can be said that there is no chance of capturing the ballistic trajectory. The enemy's last firewall may be a high-density SPAAGM gun such as the CIWS can shoot at 10,000 rounds per minute. The maximum range of the 30mm such gun is only 5,000 meters, which means that it only takes 4.5 seconds for the YJ-18 to fly this distance. The interception will become a small probability of 1 in 10,000. The degree of difficulty for intercepting YJ-18 is self-evident. These are all export versions of missiles. That is the first time I have seen so many types of missiles. It is just to feel the shock brought by this kind of great power. This missile is more compact than the previous upstream and Seahawk types. But the sense of technology I feel seems more sufficient, and its combat effectiveness has been qualitatively improved compared to its predecessors. It can be launched from land-based missile vehicles or surface ships. Used to strike large and medium-sized surface ships. This missile looks even more majestic. You can see that its wing shape is quite dynamic, the trapezoidal wing with the smooth and slender body gives a feeling of howling. Moreover, it has a long range, can plan the flight route in advance, and has the ability to strike with precision in a long range. The missile next to me is smaller than the previous two models. Although it is a small size, its power is not reduced at all. It is specially used on small combat platforms such as guided missile boats and has the characteristics of good concealment and strong penetration capability. This is a submarine launched anti-ship missile. It has a torpedo shell, which will fall off when it is shot out of the torpedo tube. After it jumps out of the water, its wings are deployed, and often used to attack small and medium-sized surface targets such as frigates and speedboats. Turning to Mr. Huang Ruasong's model development history, that is basically a history of the development of China's anti-ship and cruise missiles. Starting from the upstream, one, China's first type of anti-ship missile, the models he worked on covered short range, medium range, and long range, which covered launch platforms from shore to ship, ship to ship, air to air, and air to ground missiles. The speed of missiles includes subsonic speed, high subsonic speed, supersonic speed and hypersonic speed. My dream is, the sky allows me however to fly, the ocean allows me however to sail. My experience from decades working on missiles taught me to stick to my ideals and dreams. We must persist in self-reliance, work hard, and take the path of continuous innovation. I'm still striving. In addition to the YJ-18 missile on display for the first time, the latest Eagle Strike full-range supersonic missile, YJ-12, also came to the airshow. The whole flight of this missile uses supersonic speed to greatly increase the difficulty of being intercepted. This is a submarine launch missile, CM-708UNA, which is launched through the submarine's horizontal torpedo tube. It is launched underwater. Its strike distance is relatively long, and its range can reach 290 kilometers. Its warhead is also large, reaching 200 kilograms, which can strike large and medium-sized surface targets. This is CM-802B, the audience generally knows 802A as Chinese flying fish. This one is an upgraded version of CM-802A, with some big improvements. It is mainly reflected in two aspects. First, the range is longer, from the original 180 km to 290 km. Secondly, its anti-interference capability is stronger. In other words, the survivability of this missile is better. In addition, the HT-1E Universal Ship Launch Platform was exhibited for the first time. It can be used to greatly increase the quantity of ship-borne missiles in various types of ships. It has the advantages of universal, high density and high firepower. With this new type of universal platform, different anti-aircraft missiles, anti-ship missiles and torpedoes can be loaded into these universal launch tubes.
Each launch tube can hold up to four different types of missiles. It saves space and achieves a generalization of the ship launch platforms. Only China and the United States mastered this technology. Regarding the development of cruise missiles and anti-ship missiles, I summarize them as modernizations in 10 aspects covering systems, full area, information, networking, integration, intelligence, precision, stealth, unmanned, and clusters. After decades, based on the basic serialization we explored for a new generation, pre-research for a new generation, developed a new generation, and then finally produced a new generation of missiles. Applied these four stages of development ideas for a new generation of missiles, our current missile spectrum has covered far, medium, and short ranges, with subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic speeds. They can strike a variety of targets, including fixed targets on land, ship targets, and underwater submarine targets. The cruise missiles and anti-ship missiles we have developed are comparable to the most advanced missiles in the world. Some technologies in several models are actually ahead of the rest of the world. In the past few decades, China has developed hundreds of models of airborne missiles including various of air-to-air, air-to-ground, and air-to-ship missiles. Many of the export versions of such missiles were unveiled at this air show. Look, this is the LD-10 light short-range anti-radiation missile. We just saw two such missiles hanging under J-16D fighter belly lifts in the outfield. It turns out that these are two anti-radiation missiles, also known as anti-radar missiles. It refers to a missile that uses the electromagnetic radiation of the enemy's radar and antenna for guidance to destroy the enemy's radar and its carrier or communication who, in electronic countermeasures, it is the most effective weapon against radar. Here, a large number of high-precision domestic military products gathered together, each of the great power weapons feasted the audience, attracting representatives of investors and exhibitors from various countries to stop frequently. We can see from this picture that there are four major elements that make up this defense system. The first major element is the various radars. These radars are equivalent to the eyes of the entire system used to find targets in the air. Of course, our radars have different bands and frequencies, as well as different functions, so they have different detection capabilities. Choose suitable radars for different aerial targets and distances, just like eyes. The second element is this command and control system. The communication distance between our command and control system and all other weapon systems is also different according to the needs of the operation. It is like our human brain. It is used to receive the information transmitted by the radar after some analysis, processing and judgment, so that it sorts out the important parameters related to the air target. It is the highest level in the system, commanding these weapon systems of different ranges to conduct battle operations. The third element is the classification and pertinence of weapon systems. We have just seen that air defense weapon systems have long range, medium range, medium short range, and short terminal range systems. Different weapon systems are responsible for different intercept ranges, respectively. In this picture, we can visually see that their respective intercepts are an ellipsoid shape which represents their air defense protection areas. The last element is the communication system shown on the diagram. These blue and yellow data transmission lines can be wired or wireless or even satellite communication. Organizing the above four elements together, data transmission is equivalent to the blood of the entire system revitalizing the entire air defense missile system. What are the benefits of this? I think there are at least two benefits. First, it has formed a multi-level air defense system, including long range, medium to long range, medium to short range, and short to terminal range. In this way, we effectively complement each other at different levels. If a target breaks through our outer defense, our short range air defense weapon system will attack that target to achieve an effective defense supplement. Yes, multi-layer interception.
The second advantage is that we can choose the most suitable system to intercept a target accordingly. For example, after the brain analyzes and judges and confirms that an incoming target is a high threat, we will choose to intercept it at the outermost layer with a medium to long-range air defense system. Otherwise, we can use medium to short-range air defense missiles to intercept. This is the most cost-effective tactic. Don't use a cannon to hit a mosquito. Mm. <laughs> 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 <laughs>